So second item of business is getting back in the house. So I open the door, close it. Basically, the more he waits, the more this door is gonna open. He's like, I wanna go back outside. Hmm, guess this dog is trained already. Take off my shoes. Ready, Popsicle? I'm just not sure about this place, huh? Okay, let's go. teach him how to communicate using the leash. So this is going to be used as a head, tall, head halter or, you know, like it was when you first came over, you can use it as just a, a slip lead. Goes right on over the nose and the leash comes out of the back here. So all we're asking him to do is yield to the leash pressure by sitting or laying down. Right now, he has no idea what we want, so I'm just waiting him out patiently. This is not a lot of pressure on the leash. It's just, you know, enough to make it tight, but basically I'm gonna release all pressure when that butt hits the ground. Oh, my dog's being a giant baby whining over there. it out. Good job, buddy. Let's go. Good. So when I turn away from him, automatically he's behind me, which is what you want when you're walking your dog. All right, so we are going to work on the same skills we were working on inside. I know there's a car, it's upsetting, the light goes on. So this is literally step one, just teaching him to sit at your side while wearing the transitional leash. Leash is loose, I'm not holding him here. He's the one holding the stay. It's just a very short distance stay. Um, I like to always work on things in terms of distance, duration, and distractions. First thing I work on is duration, because if he's not paying attention to me while I'm standing here, he's not going to pay attention to me when I'm taking steps forward, and another step forward, and another step forward. Let's go. So he's in total avoidance right here. 
He does not want anything to do with this transitional leash. But whenever I feel him at the end of the leash kind of going the other way, I just tug on the leash and turn away from him so that um, he's automatically behind me. So therefore he's learning to follow. And you might have to look at him when you do this, but I can literally just feel what he's doing with my hand. And it's way too cold to be moving around that much. And let's try to sit. Thinking about it, good. So you see there's this toggle. Basically there's no pressure unless I'm giving him information with the leash. So totally loose right now. And the way I'm holding the leash is important as well. So you don't want to give him too much latitude to make the wrong decision. So he's only got about a foot of leash, maybe a little more, a foot and a half. So that's kind of the, he can make a semicircle or like most of a circle the way around, but he can't be too wrong. He doesn't have the full length of the leash. That's a pretty big radius. and I'm keeping it loose, I'm only nudging him if he gets out of that zone where I want him to be. So he'll learn that to be right by your side is the sweet spot. Right now I'm not so worried about the precision. I'm just kind of teaching him this communication system. It's pressure on, pressure off. You're a good boy. Yes, sir. And shall we go the other way? Good. Yeah, let's do it the other way. Come on. So, yep, kind of starting back at step one. So I'll take a step backward and go back to the last point where he was successful, which was st sitting right by me. Good. Just kind of let him settle himself down for a second. Let's go. So dogs are not super great at generalizing stuff. You saw how well he was walking when I was um, going to the left. To the right's a different story. We've got to teach it to him this way too. Because the picture looks different to him. You know, I'm on a different side of him. He's perceiving it differently. That's okay. We just kind of go back to the teaching phase. So essentially what I'm doing, I'm opening the door very slowly. The more he waits, the more it opens. You can't even look at it, it's just too distressing. Let's go. And then he's allowed to come through when I say so. And it's the same thing from this side, even though you can't really see it. Very slow. He's kind of stuck behind the door. And then when he tries to rush through, I just close it. And if he gets a little too far, I'll just pull him back with the leash. Yeah, now he's looking away. He's avoidant. He doesn't even want to look at that temptation. <laughs> it's too stressful. Okay, free! Free! So free is going to be one of your um, marker words. We got yes, that means um, come to me for a treat. Free means go do what you want. You, what you want. You're released from this command. Free! 
or you know for a stay or something it can mean you know you're done staying or when you're on a walk you could say free when you're ready to let him go sniff and be done with heel position so you always want to tell him what to do rather than just no 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 because no can mean a lot of things it can mean don't jump on grandma it can mean don't pull on the leash it can mean don't pee on the um, whatever on the bookshelf so those are all different actions that's a lot for a dog to understand with one word I didn't say anything there but I kind of went like that with my hand dogs understand body language much more than words obviously ready hey let's go so like I'm not going anywhere with you lady you're scary <laughs> <laughs>